Our first guest tonight is everyone's favourite Cupid. Fred Siriex is a maitre d' and TV personality. While serving as a general manager at the Michelin-starred restaurant Galvin at Windows, he became known to the wider public for his standout appearance on the BAFTA-winning first dates. Come on, shake it off. Shake it off. Since then, he's gone on road trips with Gordon Ramsay and Gino DeCampo, explored remarkable places to eat, and now returns to where it all started for first dates at Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fred Sirius! Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you very much. That's very cosy. It is. I was wondering how it would feel, but I like it. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. And you suit it very well. I can't imagine there's anything that you look bad in. Thank you. Do you know, I often think, when I watch uh, first dates, I kind of feel like... I feel like you shouldn't be there. And let me explain that. <laughs> because when they walk in to a date, nervous, you know, they're meeting a, a girl they haven't met, you're the first thing they see. You set the bar so high. It's almost like, that's what she could have won. <laughs> and then they have to walk past and go, get out of the fucking way. Could they just send what... What we need is a manta just to come in. <laughs> and just go, all right, welcome. And then, all like... Right. All right, mate. Yeah, okay. that's what I mean. But, like, do, do you... Cos you're clearly brilliant. I love the show. Is it... When you've got a Christmas special coming out, mm -hmm. it feels like you were made to do it. You feel so natural around people. You feel your enthusiasm to try and get them together. Well, was, was it like that as soon as you found the show? You're like, yeah, but you know, I've been in the restaurant business since I'm 16 years old. Have I you? came here when I was 20, so I've been working in this, in this business for 30 years. Right. And, you know, when you come to a restaurant, it's all about delivering the customer's expectation. And the expectation of the people who come on Thursday is they want to meet the person they're going to spend the rest of their life with. Yeah. What we have to do, really, is set the scene, make sure that people feel welcome, they feel good, you know, and that they have a, a memorable experience. Yeah. And, and, and we are really resp I feel very responsible with them because for a lot of people, you know, it's like the last hope of this is how they feel inside because, yes. you know, for whatever reason, they did not find a person that they want to be with and they come to us and they expect the moon from us yeah. and we've got to deliver. That's our responsibility. And do you feel that kind of tension or that nervousness when you see the couples? Are you kind of literally... Because we see you sort of swish around. Are you kind of, like, willing them to get it right? I'm very invested. Yeah. I mean, you know, our job is to make sure that they get on. I mean, obviously, chemistry, that you, you, you cannot yeah. fake it. Either people will have it or they don't. But we have a dossier, I mean, as big as, as, big as this for every single couple. Do you? And we have to write down the reasons why we think they're going to they, they, they're gonna eat it off and at what point will, will, will they like each other. Yeah. So we have a fairly good idea, but all this is on paper. Yeah. And what happens in real life is completely different. Yeah. You're, you're like the Gandalf of romance. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> you just feel like... No, but I mean that in a good way. It feels like you would, you're the guy that I would go to. Well, thank you. Because my brother's single. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> right, he wants to meet somebody. Like, do you know what I mean? And, and he's such a great human being. But he is... I'm not sure if this translates. You know, you know Marmite? Yeah? Yeah. Either so, you love him or you hate him. This is it. So people that love him, love him. But people that don't, it's like... Gah. And I would say, what would your advice be to somebody that, that is... Like, I love him. If I was a lady and I wasn't related... You would. Totally. <laughs> like that. I think he'd be a lot of fun in the sack. But... <laughs> but, but he's, he's... Do you know what I mean? Do you have advice for somebody like that? Well, I would have to meet him, to talk to him, to see where he's at, what he's feeling, um, and also what he's looking for. Yeah. How confident is he? Um, yeah. Where does he normally go to, 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 to find a partner? T Tinder. Tinder. So, <laughs> but I think that's... why not? I mean, I think that dating app is not maybe is not maybe the answer. I don't think so because right. people keep having this conversation with strangers and they don't mean anything. This conversation is just wind. What is important is that you meet that person in real life. Yeah. So for him, for example, let's say he meets somebody on Tinder. They like him. He has a quick exchange of texts, one or two exchanges, and said, "Let's go for a walk." He's bang into that. So he's you like... go for a walk in the park, or yeah. you know, you go for a drink, or maybe you go for a meal, but. You know, let's just go for tapas. Because if you like the person, you know, you order two dishes, you order a glass of wine, and if you like the person, you order the whole menu. If not, huh, sayonara. See you later. <laughs> That's real wisdom, because if you order, like, a shepherd's pie... It's going to take a long time. <laughs> it's, and it's hot. You know the thing where you're like... And it's oh, big. Yeah, she's a big... It's not very elegant. No. It's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. You know, it's like if you order spaghetti, you know, and you, yeah. and you go, oh. Yeah. Do you know, I had a friend of mine that could only eat spaghetti naked because... <laughs> Like, at home, not in a restaurant, but... 
<laughs> but he knew he'd get it everywhere, so he would sort of just get down and kind of eat it like that. Did he really? Yeah. I've never seen You've him do that. got some interesting uh, friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had moments on the show where you're like, that cannot make it? That, w that we haven't seen, and look at that face instantly. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I mean, look, I mean, it's, it's people, and people are very unpredictable. You yeah. never know what you're going to get. I mean, there was one instance when we had this girl who came into the restaurant. She already had drunk quite a little bit before she came in. <laughs> and she was dancing at the bar by herself. She was singing, and right on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was plastered, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a professional, I'm responsible for the people there, and I had to decide to not serve her any more drinks, and we, we couldn't get on with, with the date. He was just oh. responsible with us, yeah. Oh, man. So, um, what can people look forward to for the Christmas first dates? Well, look, it's, it's all the things that you love on first date. You never know what's going to happen, but, of course, the people who come on the first date episode, you know, for, for Christmas, they really want to find somebody special, and it's, uh, it's supercharged. It's very exciting, very emotional. It's all the thing that you love about first dates. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever have, like, I'm curious, what were you like as a dater in your kind of younger, younger well, days? When I was younger, like 14, 15, I think Dates. I was on top of the class. <laughs> yeah. I was on top of the class. There was this guy in, uh, in, in my school. He used to just look at the girls and he would kiss them. Just like that. And he was just like, wow. And I think, oh my God, look at him. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I never got that. And then as the years passed, you know, and I progressed and I upgraded to uh, a higher level, I got better. <laughs> but I can't imagine you being sort of nervous. You don't give off that No, energy. I don't think I was nervous, but I think that it's the way that you approach dating, the way that you're able to come across, uh, you're, you're able to, to communicate with people, and, and, and it's that... You know, I mean, I know it's cliche to say that je ne sais quoi, but that guy had it. Yeah. I think you must have it. Because you're good looking, you're, 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 you're funny, you've got a beautiful smile. I think you'd be... <laughs> I mean, if I was, I probably would. Oh, really? But I'm not. <laughs> but I'm so close. <laughs> um... Now, as a maitre d', right, we have this phrase, the customer is always right. It's I'm... true. Is it? Because I'm curious. Do you not sometimes think, yeah, but that customer's a twat? <laughs> Look, there are some customers which are twats, yeah. but who am I to judge them? I see. And let's, let me remind you something. The customers pay the bill. Right. You know, and whenever I come home and I put bread on the table, it's because the customers have paid for that bread. Yeah, yeah. And I owe them respect. Now, some people might say, oh, yeah, but what about... It? Let's not talk about the exceptions here. I want to talk about how to do the job properly, how to be a professional, how to deliver yeah. every single time. That's what I'm interested in. There's always exception, but I'm going to be the judge of that. Yeah. Because if you let people who are not as, as good as you or are not as experienced as you, then they're going to mess it up. And they're going to decide at that one or that one, and where is the standard? What's the level? Mm. And before you know it, there's going to be nobody else in your restaurant or, or your business, whatever business that is. You know, there's one thing, very simple. When you go into a restaurant, this is the way I teach stuff, is the person at the reception has got to see, smile, and say hello to people before they see, smile, and say hello to you. It's about being charming first, being on the front foot. It's my responsibility to make you feel welcome and to make you feel good as soon as you arrive. Yeah. And when you think about dating, it's exactly the same thing. Or if you think about relationship, it's my job to make you feel good, to make you feel that I love you. And I'm going to tell you. I'm mm. going to tell you what I like you. I'm going to tell you what, what I like about you and uh, how much you mean to me. And because I say that, you know, it's like if I smile, you're going to smile back. Yeah. You've got to be on the front foot. And totally. It's about giving first and giving generously. And that's, that's, that's a principle I live by with work, with my relationship, with, with everything that I do. Because sometimes you find couples and they say, oh... Um, my husband, my wife, you know, they never do this, they never do that. But what about you? Mm. Do you do it? Mm. Do you give first? And if you do, then they're going to give back. Wisdom. I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing I'm interested in, you're an incredibly busy man, because you're also doing Christmas Strictly this year, aren't you? Yeah. Is that not terrifying? Yeah. Was it? I was so scared. I was so scared. Then they called me. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm scared. My ticker was just like, tick, 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 tick. And I thought to myself, I've got to do it. Because I couldn't refuse because I was so scared. Right. What were you frightened about? Well, I was frightened of not being able to dance, making a fool of myself. You know, the kids are going to be watching. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I can't pull it off. And then I was wondering whether I was going to be able to, when I'm on stage and they call my name and say, now it's Fred, am I going to be petrified with fear and not, not able to remember or make stupid mistakes like I wouldn't have done in training? Yeah. So it's self-doubt. And it's a funny thing, confidence, because I'm a confident guy, I'm not shy, mm -hmm. but 
you know, it's every time you do something that pushes you, then this is when you get better at it. And because you've, you, 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 you delivered, you did something that you didn't know that you could do, that gives you the confidence. So the more you, you put yourself in a situation, and, 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 and the more you come out on the other side, the better you feel. I mean, that's, that's for me. The thing that intrigues me is that you, you say you were nervous about dancing, but I've actually found a clip of you, and this would suggest otherwise. <laughs> Like, that is, that's some exquisite movement. Well, I'm not shy about dancing no. at Christmas parties, on top of tables, taking my, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. Do we see any of that in, um, cos if you do that, I mean, you're gonna kill a lot of 40-year-old women. Like, <laughs> you can feel the energy in the room already. Like, yeah, do it. <laughs> It <laughs> was a fun night. It was a fun <laughs> night. <laughs> Excellent. And well, what, are your, what are your Christmas plans? What, what do you do? Uh, Christmas, look, I'm hoping my parents are going are gonna to come. I mean, they couldn't come last year. My, my brother is here, so his children, my children. So, you know, it's about getting the family together. It's yeah. important for all of us to be together. Yeah, and do you do the cooking now, or do you, are you kind of the orchestrator? Do you feel that responsibility to be the maitre d' of Christmas? No, I do the cooking. I do think you? that my, my children think I'm the waiter at home, actually. My <laughs> goes, Can you get me that? Can you get me that? I'm like the waiter there, you know what I mean? I've got to do everything. Well, that's an interesting question. So do you treat them, is the customer always right, even if the customer's your child and it's annoying you? Look, my children are the best thing I've done and the best thing I will ever, always do, yeah. ever well, do, so... It's incredible. Your yeah. daughter, an Olympian as well. I like, know. How, how wild must that be? Yeah, I think it's, it's amazing. I mean, you see, it's, it's, it's luck that she is an Olympian because when she was at primary school, there was a testing day uh, and the local diving club came and looked at the kids and, you know, they just test them on agility and strength and basic exercise that you would do for, 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 um, for diving. And then she got selected. She went on to dive, you know, and you're a little girl, you're seven and you jump off the pool and then you do more complicated dive. And before you know it, you're in the Olympics and you're the seventh best diver in the world. It's just insane. Um, you also run an amazing charity called The Right Course. Could you tell us a bit about that? So, um, basically what we do, we transform prison mess, staff mess, into fully functioning restaurants run by the prisoners for the benefit of the prison staff and the contractors. So, um, they run the, the show in the front of ours, they also cook. Um, and they are there at the end of their sentence, so the last restaurant we open is in Wormwood Scrubs. And so, because it's about reducing reoffending, which is about 40 to 80%, depending on yep. the offense. Yep. And so one of the hurdles of not reoffending is having a job upon release. Yes. So obviously they do qualifications and they do the training on the job training. So when they are ready to go, then we put them forward for interviews with employers yep. and they can get a job. But also it's about reducing the skill shortage and the staff shortage in hospitality, which is just massive now so, after Brexit and after COVID. So it's true. massive. So it's two birds, one stone. It's sort of that the age old thing, isn't it? Rehabilitation is far better than revenge because you're literally giving people an opportunity. There's a lot of stigma attached to prison, or oh, yet yeah, in prison for a reason, we should leave them there. But I believe genuinely that prison is not the answer. Of course, if somebody is dangerous and they kill whatever, you've got to lock them away and you've got to find a solution to protect the public. But the people who are there, I mean, the reason why I started this is because I've had a very happy childhood. I've had everything. Parents are loving, you know, supportive. You know, I'm still scared of mom and dad and what they think. But these kids, they did not have that. I mean, these kids are 25, 30 years old yeah, yeah. people, right? And they did not have that. You know, some of them, maybe they, they, their parents had died and somebody was drug addict, they were stealing, you know, and it was in the family. And so how do you expect people to, to get out of that, of that cycle if yeah. they were brought up in that cycle? So we need to do something if they did not have it from the start. I was very lucky to be born where I was born. Yeah. Very lucky. But not everybody had that chance. Yeah, really interesting, man. Commendable. We should, we should say before we go, when does Christmas uh, first dates air? 22nd of December. Um, I think it's 9 o'clock. It's always 9 o'clock, so let's say it's 9 yeah, o'clock. Yeah, 9 o'clock. Excellent. Look forward to that. Ladies and gentlemen, please give up for the wonderful Fred Sirian.